little book is designed to tell you everything you need to know about the science of getting ahead. Now let us assume you are young, healthy, clear-eyed, and eager, anxious to rise quickly and easily to the top of the business world. You can. I can. If you have education and intelligence and ability, so much the better. But remember that thousands have reached the top without any of these qualities. Just have courage and memorize the few simple rules in the chapters that follow. If you truly wish to be among the lucky golden few, you can. I can! Yes, sir, I just bumped into him. 
You were speaking to him? Is he a friend of yours? Uh, sir, I don't think a man should trade on friendship to get a job. Very, very, very well put, young man. Very well put. Well, if you'll step into my office, I'm sure we can work something out. Uh, my name's Mr. Bratt. Oh. And you are? Oh, Finch, sir. Uh, Pierpont Finch. Haha. <laughs> Pierpont. Say, maybe we ought to make that J. Pierpont Finch. <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, sir, it is. Well, uh, step into my office. <laughs> Good God, Rosemary, you could at least let me finish my metro cast. This is important, Smitty. We've got to help this boy. Where is he? How would I know? He must have gone into Mr. Brad's office. You go on in there. You're Brad's secretary. He'll listen to you. Then why this frantic, urgent urgency? Please, Smitty, we've got to help him. But why? Fill me in, girl. Wherefore is this creep different from all other creeps? He's not a creep, Smitty. He has a sort of noble courage, yet deep down I feel like he's sort of helpless. Rosemary, your mother instinct is a big drag. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that's all settled. Nice to have you aboard, Finch. <laughs> nice to be shipping out with you, sir. <laughs> oh, here, let me get that for you. Oh, who is that? That's my helpless friend. Isn't he adorable? <laughs> adorable, maybe. Helpless, no. Shut up, Smitty. I just hope he hasn't got a curl. Uh, my secretary will take care of getting your forms and particulars. And oh, Smitty, this is our new Mr. Finch. Hello there. My name is Pilkington, Rosemary Pilkington. Oh, hello. Mr. Finch will be starting out in the mail room. Glad you don't mind that, Finch. Oh, sir, in a big pond like this, everyone must begin as a little fish. Even a barracuda. <laughs> now, no, Smitty, will you? Say, Molly, have you guys been calling out those wicked catalogs yet? I don't know. I'm going to lunch. At 11 o'clock. Why? Because I'm the boss's nephew. Oh, but This is Mr. Bigley's nephew, Bud Frog. This is our new Mr. Finch. He'll be working with you in the mailroom. Hello, Finch. I'm Bud Frump, J.B. Bigley's nephew. Well, how do you do? Uh, Smitty gets Mr. Finch's particulars. Yes, sir. Finch, nice to have you on the team. Nice to be playing with you, sir. <laughs> Finch, you're ambitious. Not necessarily. Good. Just keep that in mind. If you just remember who I am and who you are, we'll get on fine. If not, you'll go crying to your uncle. I beg your pardon, I'm not go crying to my uncle. It just so happens that my mother is Mrs. Bigley's sister. If I feel that anything is wrong, I phone my mother. She phones Mrs. Bigley, and then Mrs. Bigley phones Mr. Bigley. That's the democratic way. <laughs> Mr. Finch, a man like you doesn't have to worry about someone like him. <laughs> Smitty, you're going to give me just particulars? Ah, uh, yes, particulars. Now, Mr. Finch, the first question. Oh, have you got a girl? A girl? No. Good! I mean, that's the right answer. I mean, it's very wise to not have a girl. I'm glad to understand, Miss Pilkington. You see, some women wouldn't. You see, I feel that when a man wants to rise in the world of business, a girl in, let's say, an emotional involvement can only lead to getting involved emotionally. That's very uh, intelligent, Mr. Finch. Yes. Rosemary, are you through with Mr. Finch? For the moment. Fine. Mr. Finch, if you'll just step into my office, we'll get our business done. Oh, thank you, Miss Pilkington. Uh, Rosemary Pilkington? Glad to be aboard. Well, Rosemary, you see, uh, I think it's fascinating. I've seen some ambitious characters around here, but this boy is the Acres Beaver of the Mont New Rochelle. Huh? Or maybe White Plains. No. New Rochelle. What? New Rochelle. Waiting to say goodbye. 
There's no coffee. <laughs> There's no coffee. <laughs> no coffee. No coffee. No coffee. You just 
want me to pass this flower? You don't know who I am. Well, that doesn't matter. What matters is the flower seemed to cry out to be worn by you. Young man, I'm Miss Jones, Mr. Bigley's secretary. No, that can't be. Well, I mean, that just, that just can't be. Why not? Well, by Bud Frum's description of you, I never have, well, I mean, you know, you're, you're not a frightening person. Thank you. And if it's not a place for me to say so, Miss Jones, I think you're a very attractive person, no matter what Bud Frum says. What did you say your name was? Oh, Finch, F-I-N-C-H, Finch, dear Pot Finch. How is it I haven't seen you before? Oh, well, I'm not supposed to deliver the executive mail. That's his job, but from F-R-U-M-P. Hmm, well, thank you for the flower. You're a very interesting young man. Thank you, Miss Jones. Uh, say, Jonesy. I like a point with the bus at around three. I'll check on it, Milton, let you know. Flowers? Got a new boyfriend, Jonesy? This was given to me by a very nice young man. You should know him. Finch. Yes? Finch. This is Mr. Gatch. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Gatch? Hello. Mr. Gatch would be a good man for you to know. His department is very important. Oh, I know all about Mr. Gatch. <laughs> He's in charge of <laughs> plans and systems of interdepartmental evaluation, also pre promotion of promotion, post administrative research, and multi development on a multi level level. Say, Jonesy, this is a smart one. I didn't know I did all that. <laughs> very fine man, Mr. Gatch. I hear he has an opening in his department. Yes, he has, but he hasn't been able to make up his mind yet. Well, thank you for the flower, Finch. Oh, you're welcome, Miss Jones. Hiya, Jonesy. Miss Jones. Say, Rosemary, what would you say Finch, about... you've got to pick up a second delivery. Quit goofing off. Right, bud, old buddy boy. Well, got to go to work now, Rosemary. Thanks for the flower. Well, thanks for the flower. You gave my flower to Miss Jones. Rosemary. Surely you wouldn't be grudge an old lady a moment of happiness. Well, I guess it's important for you to be nice to Miss Jones. I'm glad to understand. Hi, Rosemary. Well, Rosemary, how are you doing? Oh, I don't know, Smitty. He's, he's, Smitty. What's the opposite of a sex maniac? A businessman. <laughs> because I want the new head of the mailroom job. And I know I'm next in line, but there's this new fellow working here who has me worried. Oh, he's smart, comes in on time, works hard, never goofs off. You know, a real rat. Yes, what do you want, Miss Jones? Mr. Bigley, your wife is calling. Uh, tell her I'm out, tell her I'm busy, tell her I'm in a meeting. Damn it, put her on. Hello, Gertrude. Glad you called. What's on your mind? Uh huh. Uh huh. Well, I'm sorry, Gertrude. I can't help but there. The head of the mailroom should be his own successor. I can't switch signals in the middle. Play them. Set the whole team. If I interfered, that would be nepotism. Nepotism! That's 
when your nephew is a damn fool. Well, I'll see. Damn it. Miss Jones? Yes, Mr. B? Miss Jones, I've told you that speaking to my wife upsets me. Well, J.B., you said to put her Never on. mind that. I need something to calm my nerves. Where is my... you know? I put it in the top drawer of the filing cabinet. Thanks. One pearl one. <sighs> Let's get going, boys. Mm. Yes, Mr. Twimble, I've already started sorting. Lynch, as head of this entire mailroom, I would like to say that I am very pleased with your work. Thank you, sir. You have an inborn gift for mailroom, Murray. Thank you, sir. Coming from you, that's a great honor. Hello, Mallory. No, Mallory. Oh, uh, just a minute. It's for you, Twimble, uh, Mr. Gatch, and personnel. Ah, uh, this may be a very important call for some of us. Hello. Good morning, Mr. Gatch. What's the idea? Idea of what, bud? You know, you trying to butter up Twimble. Well, believe me, it won't work. Good God, bud, just because I'm nice to man, does that mean I have to have an angle? If anybody's going to get that job, you know. Well, it's about time. I got you, Mr. Brett. Thanks very much. Well, boys, looks as if they're going to promote old Twimble to the shipping department. Oh, congratulations! Who's going to be the new head of the mail room? I won't say until it's official, but Mr. Brett is going to leave the choice to me. Twimble, he said. The mail room is the mighty center of this nerve organization. You've been an outstanding mail room head, and we want you to choose your successor. We want you to choose him on merit. On merit alone. That's not fair. I'm going out for a smoke. Smoke? Oh, uh -huh. he's going to call his mother. It won't help him if I have anything to say. I have somebody else in mind for this job. Uh -huh. Say, Mr. Twimble. Yes? You've been with this company a long time, haven't you? Long, long time. Last month, I became a quarter of a century, man. Oh, gee, that's beautiful. Quarter of a century. A quarter of a century. And how long have you been in the mail? Twenty-five years. Yep, it's not easy to get a medal like this. It takes a combination of skill, diplomacy, and bold caution. When I joined this firm as a brash young man, well, I said to myself, now, brash young man, don't get any idea. Well, I stuck to that, and I haven't had one in years. Oh, you play it safe. I play it the company way. Wherever the company puts me there, I'll stay. But what is your point of view? I have no point of view. Oh, supposing the company thinks I think so, too. Well, what would you say if I wouldn't say. Your face is a company. Face. It smiles at executives and goes back in place. The company furniture, oh, it suits me fine. The company letter is a valentine. Is there anything you're against? Unemployment. When they want brilliant thinking from employees, that is no concern of mine. The poser man of genius makes suggestions. Watch that genius get suggested to resign. So you play it the company way. With all company policy, it's by me, okay? Okay, you rise up to the top. There's one thing clear. Whoever the company fires, I will still be here. Oh, I'm certainly not at home. It's cozy. Your brain is a company brain. The company watched it, now I can't come. Boy, what style, what punch. The company restaurant. Every day, same lunch. They're a sandwich. It's delicious. Well, I must try it. Early in the week. Do you have any hobbies? I have a hobby. I play gym. 
Jim with Mr. Bratz. And do you play it nicely? Play it nicely. Still, he blesses me at every game like that. Why? Because I play it the company way. Executive policy is by me okay. How can you get anywhere in your house? Company fires, I will still be here. You will still be here after a year after a risk. Never take a risk all year. Well, let's get back to work. They may be promoting me, but till then, the mail must go through. Hi, Bud, how's your mother? What mother? What mother? Hello, men. Well, Twimble, it's all set. As of today, you're ahead of shipping. Thanks, Mr. Bratt. Now, let's talk about your successor. Uh, say, Bratt, have you heard from my uncle today? No, but. Well, Twimble, your uh, shoes are going to be hard to fill, but who have you picked to fill them? Mr. Bratt, I've given it a good deal of thought, pro and con. I think your man is young Finch. Congratulations, Finch! I'm going out for a smoke. Thank you, but I can't accept it. Are you turning this job down? Well, that's right. I think there's a man who's better qualified. A man who's been here longer than I. Gentlemen, I recommend Bud Frump. You're kidding. Bud Frump? Uh, well, uh, this is something. Su Surprise-wise, I mean. <laughs> well, if, uh, if he really feels that way, then... I'm going to call my mother and tell her. I don't understand. Well, you see, Mr. Twumble, knowing you has taught me a lot. The thing you have taught me... Hello? Yes, JB? This is Brat. Mr. Big Boss. Oh. Oh, oh, I understand your problem, JB. Actually, we, we had picked someone else. Oh, but, but it's quite all right, JB. The young fellow with Nick turned the job over to Bud. Yes, he thinks Bud is better qualified, and he... No, he doesn't seem to be out of his mind. Uh, he was just explaining about it when he called. Go ahead, Fitch. Oh, you see, Mr. Twimble, the great thing you have taught me is that the whole company is greater than any single person. He says the whole company is greater than any single person. The whole team is greater than, greater than any single player. The whole team is greater than any single player. The whole crew is greater than any one horse. The whole crew is greater than any one horseman. The whole salad is bigger than any piece of lettuce. The whole salad is... Oh, you, you can hear it. <laughs> the whole omelet is bigger than any egg. <laughs> Isn't that great, JB? Sort of chokes you up a bit, doesn't it? <laughs> His name? It's uh, Finch. F-I-N-C-H. F-I-N-C-H. Yeah, well, I'm going to be keeping an eye on him myself. Right. See you later, JB. Finch? You just got me off the hook with Mr. Bigley. Glad I can help Mr. Brant. Oh, I appreciate it. Good luck, Twimble. Thanks, Mr. Brant. Say, Mr. Twimble, don't I have to take this mail into Mr. Gatch? Yeah. Gatch. 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 Say, I just remembered. Mr. Gatch is looking for a new junior executive in his department. <laughs> he is? I'm. I'm going to talk to him about you. Me? A junior executive? Your generosity and thoughtfulness may prove to be a really good thing for you. Oh, by George, ethical behavior always pays off. Finch, you did a very, very wise thing. Oh, that doesn't matter to me, Mr. Bratt. I did what was right. My mother was very happy. Uh, boys and girls, boys and girls, meet the new head of the mail room. Bud Rock. <laughs> Thanks, Ponty, old man. Good luck, bud. Uh, come along, Finch. I want to talk to you. Boy, he sure amazed me. I'm still wondering why he did this for me. So am I. I still think my original choice of a man was best. Well, now, wait a minute, Trimble. Ponty okayed it. It's just that. You have no reneging. I was promised the job. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, bud. I've been here a long time, a quarter of a century. I just want to make sure things are done the right way. Oh, I know what you mean, Mr. Twimble. 
from now on, Executive club? Me? Sure. That's like you're a junior exec. I can put you on my expense account. Oh, oh let me go get my coat. Okay, I'll meet you at the elevator. Ah, Rosemary dear. See, you always brightens my day. Please, Mr. Gatch. I've got to stop reading girly magazines. <laughs> Rosemary, I've got a surprise for you. Mr. Gatch is taking me to lunch. To lunch? Huh? How do I look? You look fine, Ponty. Just fine. Have a good time. Thanks, Rosemary. If you have followed the simple instructions exactly as outlined, you should by now be a junior executive. Congratulations! Nothing can stop you now. Jones, 
There is a young lady who insists on speaking you with, with you, Mr. B. She says it's personal. What she? What's her name? She says, Yona. Oh, <laughs> well, put her up, put her on, put her on. Oh, hello. Oh, you knew I didn't forget. I'll take care of everything. One moment. Miss Jones, get me Bratton personnel right away. You be here in the morning. All right, bye bye. Hi, Brad, it's JB. I want you to do me a favor. I wonder if you could find a spot for a young lady who wants to be a secretary. Uh, her dad was a classmate of mine at Old Ivy. She's an old friend of the family. Got a good head on her shoulders. Her name? LaRue. Hedy LaRue. Bigley's nephew. Oh, how do you do? I'm waiting for Mr. Brat of personnel. I'm a secretary. <laughs> yes, I spotted that the minute you walked in. Oh, thank you. Of course, I knew it this, and... <laughs> yeah. I mean, yes. Um, uh, uh, I'm Bert Brat, <laughs> head of personnel. <laughs> Sorry to have uh, kept you waiting. Oh, not at all, sir. It is I whom am late. <laughs> not really. Oh, yes. <laughs> you see, I was very naughty this morning, and I'm still not accustomed to early arisals. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Uh, well, if you... <laughs> Well, if you'll uh, step into my office, we can. Ah! Uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, this is my secretary, Miss uh, Smith. How are you, dear? Fine, dear. Mr. Bratt? Mr. Bratt? Uh, yes, Smitty. I have to get some new tax with Oh, uh, right, right. You, you do that, Smitty. <laughs> Uh, Miss LaRue, if you'll step into my office, we'll go ahead and get your particulars. Um, 39, 22, 38. I'm in the pool! Ah. Boy, isn't she something? She sure is. Uh, gentlemen, gentlemen, may I have a word? Say, Mr. Bratch, I need a new secretary! Miss so <laughs> LaRue will be assigned. As soon as her qualifications have been determined. I'd sure like to determine. Oh, oh, oh yeah, that's one. Gentlemen! Gentlemen! A secretary is not a toy. No, my boy, not a toy. 
to fondle and dandle and playfully handle in search of some pure isle joy. <laughs> no! A secretary is not, definitely not, a toy. You're absolutely right, Mr. Brat. We wouldn't have it any other way, Mr. Brat. It's a company rule, Mr. Brat. Exactly. 
He's going to be head of sales in here. Please, man. So I said, just keep your hands where they belong. I'm dying to see that new production chart. So, what the hell? I'm having dinner with them. Oh! Did you call my wife and tell her I won't be home for dinner? Yes, Mr. B. By the way, you left your golf clubs in the office. Tomorrow is Saturday, and you're playing with Mr. Womper, the chairman of the board. Oh, well, I'll be staying in town tonight, so uh, I'll just come and pick up the clubs in the morning. And you asked me to remind you about your college alumni association. Well, send them the same old check. I get a kick out of thinking of their faces when they get that fat check from old least likely to succeed. Very well, Mr. Bigley. Mr. Bigley, there's a phone. It's your wife. My wife? Damn it, I'll take it in your office. That's all, Miss Jones. Hey, Miss Jones. Hello, Ponty. How's the young junior executive? Oh, fine, Miss Jones, thanks to the helpful advice I've been getting from you. Well, I'm glad our little chats have proven valuable. They sure have. Oh, by the way, good luck tonight. Good luck. In the bowling tournament. I hear you're the best bowler on the ladies' team. How sweet of you to be interested in a thing like that. Well, I'm fascinated by the hobbies of people I like. Say, would you like to come watch us bowl tonight? Well, that sure would be nice, but I should probably go to bed early. I'm working tomorrow. On a Saturday? No one around here works on Saturday. Ponty, you're a very unusual boy. You'll go far. Oh, thank you, Miss Jones, and that means a lot that you're saying that because you're Mr. Bigley's uh, secretary, and Mr. Bigley is the man I most want to emulate. He's so capable and thoughtful. Uh, I heard him remembering to send a check to his old school, Harvard, isn't it? Harvard? Don't let J.B. hear you say that. He's a groundhog. But where did he go to school? Old Ivy. Old Ivy? Of course. They are the groundhogs. Mr. Bigley is very proud of his old school. Well, good night, Ponty. Good night, Miss Jones. Don't work too hard. Oh, don't worry, Miss Jones. I won't. Hello, stranger. Oh, hi, Rosemary. Hi, Smitty. Hi, Ponty. Been a long day, hasn't it? Sure has. I haven't seen you since you got your new job. Oh, well, I've been working pretty hard. Been a long day. <laughs> Say, Rosemary, where are you having dinner tonight? Uh, well, that depends. On what? On where I'm having dinner.
state. Now she's thinking, what female kind of trap could I spring? And he's thinking, well, I might as well forget the whole thing. Now she's thinking, suppose I take his arm, and he's thinking, well, really, what's the harm? And she says, hungry.
morning. Good morning. Huh? Oh, is it morning already? Good God, man. Have you been working here all night? Oh, well, I had to get, uh, let's finish up something. I shouldn't be here much longer. Why, George, is it? I'm sorry, your name slips my mind. Oh, Finch, F-I-N-C-H. Oh, yes. I've heard some good things about you from my scouts. Oh, thank you, sir. Uh, well, Finch, uh, it's good to see a man in there carrying the ball, you know? Uh, you make me feel a bit guilty. I just dropped in to pick up my golf clubs. I have to play around with a little Wally Whomper. Well, I guess one has to do that sort of thing every once in a while. Now, don't work yourself too hard, Finch. Oh, don't worry about me, sir. I'll just go get those clubs. <laughs> What's that you're humming? Huh? You were humming the old Ivy fight song. <laughs> oh, I guess it was un unconscious on my part. Did you go there? Were you a groundhog? Well, sir, I... Uh... Say it, boy! Come out with it! I know a lot of guys have an inferiority complex because they didn't go to Yale or Princeton. You're not ashamed of old Ivy, are you? No, sir. Not a bit. That's the groundhog spirit. I should have known you were old Ivy. What year? Bench? <laughs> what year did you graduate? Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I was thinking about the big game today. I'm sorry I have to miss it while playing the chipmunks. That's right. I can't make it up there either. I hope those damn chipmunks don't give us too much trouble. Oh, I think I'll take him, sir. Chernowski's knee is much better. Oh, with Chernowski in there, the team's morale should pick right up. He's the dirtiest player we've got. Oh, and even though we're not there in person, we'll be rooting for him, right? Right. Good for my nerves. Been doing it for years. 
Nobody knows but my secretary, Miss Jones. You know her? Oh, yes, I've met her. Mm. Uh, so, uh, what's this going to be? Oh, um, well, I thought I'd make it a, um, uh, a, a birdcage cover? Birdcage cover? I never, never made one of those. But how do you like this? Oh, gee, that's beautiful. And I made the cover for those golf clubs. See? Popcorn stitch. You know, sir, I kind of feel sorry for people who don't knit. They lead empty lives. I like the way you think, Fink. Think Finch, sir. Oh, think Finch, yes. Tell me, where are you headed for around here? Right young fellow like you must have it all planned out. Well, sir, um, if I'm ever fortunate enough to be in a position where I have a choice, I'd like to be where they do something real. Something a man can get his teeth into. Like solid, down to earth. Well, the advertising department. Advertising? Son, I wouldn't want that for an old classmate of mine. Why, this place has had 15 new advertising managers in the past year alone. The poor devils disappear at a rate of about one a month. Well, why is that? I fire them. Oh, but if you got a man with ideas, he can swing it. Ideas? That's what I look for. I keep hiring men who are supposed to have brilliant ideas, and none of them will ever do what I tell them. No offense, you stay where you are. Damn your department. Say, where are you? Plans and Systems? Mr. Gatch's department? Oh, a good man, Gatch. Uh, knows what he's doing. You stick with him, and I'll keep my eye on you, too. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Well, have a good day. I've got to get this done before midnight. Midnight? That's the groundhog spirit. Groundhog! Perhaps in a business relationship, it'd be best if we... Uh... You're cute. 
One moment, please. Choosing a secretary can be fraught with peril. Take a good look at the young lady who has been assigned to you. If she is so beautiful, you feel things are too good to be true, be very careful. It may be that one of the big men in the company is interested in her career. There is a simple test for this. Check on her secretarial skill. The smaller her abilities, the bigger her protector. Miss LaRue, let's try some dictation. Take a letter. Shoot. Okay. This is to Mr. Gatch. Uh, dear Mr. Gatch, um, pursuant to our uh, discussion... Wait a minute! Are you trying to catch a train? What are you taking this down in? Longhand, it's safer. I make up for it when I tie. Oh, you tie fast? Like a jackrabbit. <laughs> Twelve words a minute. <laughs> um, Miss Lou, Hetty, uh, what was your last position? I was in the tobacco business, but then Mr. Oh, Big. Mr. Big. He got me interested into wicked, so I matriculated myself into business school and. Well, here I am! Yes, here you are, aren't you? Go ahead, dictate some more. I'm going to like this jazz. Ah, uh, Miss LaRue, that letter can wait for a minute. Take this into Mr. Gouch. Mr. Gouch. Uh-huh, he's my boss. Make sure you give it to Mr. Gatch himself. Hetty? Personally. Okay, Charlie. <laughs> Vice President in charge of advertising. Who is it this time? A fellow by the name of Ovington. Benjamin Burton Daniel Ovington. BBDO. Huh. 
Well, I bet that's why Big Lee hired him. Anyway, we're throwing him a reception tonight. It's in the big executive club on the roof. I wonder how long this guy will last. Oh, I don't know, but we're giving him the full treatment. You can invite your secretary as well, by having some of the executive secretaries act as hostesses. Okay, Brad. <laughs> BBDO. Ah. Rosemary! I had lunch without you. Where have you been? Smitty, I'm the main secretary to the new advertising manager. Oh, good. What's he like? Oh, I don't care about him. But this means I'm invited to the reception tonight. Ponty will be there, too. Oh, Smitty, I've been dreaming of a chance like this. Ponty's never seen me all dressed up, you know, glamorous. Do you know what this is? Your lunch? Smitty, this is the answer of how to succeed with Fitch. A new dress, it's just beautiful. I hope it works. Good luck, Rosemary. Thanks, Smitty. You know, maybe I'll get a new dress for tonight, too. Good idea, Smitty. I hope you're very popular at the party tonight. Maybe I will be as that. I'm thinking of starting a new rumor I'm an infomaniac.
attack five. Which way is the booze? Right over here. Oh, have a double martini.
Oh, Mr. Bigley? No, it's me! Oh, hi, Hetty. Um, have you seen Mr. Bigley? He told me to see him. Mr. Bigley? He's not coming. Somebody gave you a bum steer. <sighs> Must have known it was a rip. Well, I guess I'd get better back What's to the... your hurry? Well, I thought that maybe I should... But it's more fun down here. Well, uh, Hetty, I don't think that's a good idea. You're anxious to get back to that Rosemary, huh? Are you stuck on her? Rosemary? Oh, she and I are just good friends. That's very sensible of you, Mr. Finch. An up-and-coming chap like you shouldn't be tied down. I've been watching you, Buster. You're going places. <laughs> Venezuela. Look, Hetty, I don't want to start anything with this. Wouldn't JD die if he walked in and saw you kissing me? Oh, I'd rather he didn't. Come on, let's try it. Uh -uh. You better, Finch. If you don't kiss me, I'll tell JB you did. Um, okay. But just once. Suddenly 
You think you can handle it? Oh, I don't know, sir. If there's one thing I admire in a man, it's humility. Fates are making you vice president in charge of advertising. Oh, me? A vice president? Uh, JP. <laughs> I don't want to question your decision. Finch is very bright, but he is rather inexperienced and he... I like him! I like him! I think we've hit on something here, Brett. This boy is loaded with great ideas. Ideas? Tell us some of them, Finch. Oh, well, I thought... Come on, Finch, where are those ideas? Well, sir, I thought that maybe... Well, shut up, son! Sir, I want more time... Get on the ball or you'll be out of here like a shot! I wanted to give you a clear-cut campaign! Say, JB, the plans board is meeting day after tomorrow. Finch can tell us all of his ideas then. Fine. Finch, you've got 48 hours to come up with an advertising presentation. Better get going, Finch. You're now a vice president in charge of advertising. And frankly, up to this point, I'm rather dissatisfied with your work. I don't care what happens. I'm a vice president. Vice President Finch. Oh. Hello? Get me the stationery shop downstairs. This is Mr. Finch. You know those cards I talked about last week? Go ahead and print them right away. Now let's see what happens. Oh, girls, you can come on out now. Thanks, Rosemary. Rosemary, I've got a surprise for you. I've been made a vice president. Congratulations! Can I be your secretary? Oh, gee, Hetty. I'd love that, but Rosemary's going to be my secretary now. I'll go back to the steno pool. Guess I'll wait for that pigeon tail after he's married. Rosemary? I'm going to be your secretary? Well, of course. You're Mr. Ovington's secretary, and now I'm taking over his whole department. And what makes you think I'd like to be your secretary? I'd rather die. Oh, Rosemary, you must, you have to. I'm a vice president. You, you know what a tough job that is. I can't do this without your help. Rosemary, I need you. You do? Well, in that case, of course I'll be your secretary. Oh, good. Now let's get to work. So quickly? Aren't you forgetting something? Oh, yes! <laughs> Hello, Aubrey? Who paints names on office doors? Finch! Aren't you going to kiss me? Kiss you? I can't. Why? Because you're my secretary. Wait a minute, Rosemary. Hello, name painter? Wait a minute, Rosemary. Hello, name painter? I want my name on my door in gold leaf. Oh. <laughs> J. Pierpont Finch. J. Pierpont. Suddenly there is music. All oh, caps. In the sound of my name. Oh, yes, block letters. J. Yeah, 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 yeah
Please. I'm a serious bonus. <laughs> 
success rung by painful rung until you have almost reached the top. You have done beautifully, unless you are vice president in charge of advertising. In that case, you are in terrible trouble. There is only one thing that can save you. You must get a brilliant idea. The quickest way to get ideas is to develop them. That is, you must examine the undeveloped, worthless notions of others and add to them that extra something that makes the idea your own. An undeveloped notion may come from the least likely source. Be alert. You never know who may bring it to you. Hiya, Ponty! Hi, bud. Uh, sorry I busted in, but there was no one outside. First time I've seen you in your office. Quite a layout. Ooh, my favorite style. Chinese provincial. So you're probably wondering why I'm here. Frankly, yes. Party, I want you and me to be friends. You know, smoke a peace pipe. You never liked me. Oh, but I wouldn't really say that. Don't deny it, it's true. I've been a no good backbiting fink. Oh, but that's a bit, bit strong. How would you put it? Oh. Well, I guess your way is best. Well, I'd like to change that. Now, I know you've been stuck for an idea. Now, wait a minute, but I'm not stuck. And I was thinking, that giveaway shows you're going to make a comeback. But I didn't ask for anyone else's ID. Wait, what was that? Well, I have this idea for a giveaway show. It's called the Worldwide Wicked Treasure Hunt. We hide a thousand dollar savings bond, and every week give a clue as to where it is. Look, as you say, you don't need an idea. But, uh, if you have the chance, Uh, but what did your uncle say when you told him about this? I haven't told him. If I brought it to him, he wouldn't listen. So you haven't told your uncle? No, bud. That's why I brought it to you. Uh, look, if you're not interested... Oh, no, wait a minute. The idea doesn't give me much nourishment, but uh, perhaps I'll give it a bit of a think. -think. Feel free to use it. sort of thing needs some kind of a new twist. Ponty, I'm back. I changed my mind. Oh, Miss Pilkington. I don't blame you for being cold to me, but I did change my mind. About what? About what I said in the letter. What letter? My letter of resignation. Your resignation from what? The Girl Scouts of America. Oh. Don't you understand? I've quit, resigned, left you forever. Why are you doing that? Because I was hurt. Who did that to you? You! Me? It couldn't have been me. I haven't said ten words to you all week. True. True? Good. Now listen, Miss Pilkington. Must you call me that? Can't you call me Rosemary? No. And I want you to call me Mr. Finch until you're Mrs. Finch. Am I really going to be Mrs. Finch? Come on, I thought this was all settled. I keep thinking maybe you forgot. Well, I haven't. You're going to be Mrs. Finch because we are going to be married. Now, may we discuss some serious business? Oh, sure. Okay, listen closely, Miss Pilkington. I came up with a new idea for a television program. I'm thinking of calling it the Worldwide Wicked Treasure Hunt. The prize would be a thousand dollar bond. Oh, do you think that's enough? Maybe I should make it twenty-five thousand dollars. Now listen closely, Miss Pilkington. What would you say if we give away a hundred thousand dollars? Two hundred thousand! I don't care if you give away the whole company. I love you. Oh, I'll say that again. I love you. No, before that. I said I don't care if you give away the whole company. That's it! We'll give away the whole company! What a prize! Well, of course, not the whole company, but stuck in the company. People can't resist that these days. Oh, this sort of thing needs some thinking. I've got to talk to Mr. Bigley. He's got to give me a postponement. No, I'll go see him. Good luck, Mr. Finch. Thank you, Miss Pilkins. Say, what about taking me to lunch? Nobody has to see us. 
Miss Tuskington. Sorry, Mr. Finch. <laughs> I know. 
But I'm extremely emotional. to Mr. Bigley? Mr. Bigley, uh, he's not doing anything. You can go on in. Uh, say, Hedy, are you quitting? Unless I hear otherwise to the contrary. Maybe we can help each other out. Good. Let's bust out together. Oh, there's something else in mind. Hedy, I need to talk to you alone. Let's see, where could we go? Let's go to my place. This is business. Okay, then let's go to your place. Uh, Tell you what. Take me out and buy me lunch. Let's say one o'clock meet you downstairs. Um, I, I don't think it's Do you want idea. to talk or don't you? All right. But we better meet around the corner. Gotcha, cutie. Chicken. <laughs> Well, 
believe me, he's dead, dead, dead. And that's what we have to do. That's fantastic. Well, I don't know. Finch has a way of uh, bouncing. I wouldn't believe he was dead even if I read his obituary. Ordinarily, I would agree with you. Finch is very smart. But let's not forget he's now working in advertising and that does something to men's brains. Oh, it's Finch. Oh, has anyone seen my wild root tree oil? I am. All set for the big meeting? Uh, could be. <laughs> could be. Well, wish me luck. Good luck.
twirled his machine and the businessman at meetings. Not here yet, sir. Ah, oh, well. We'll just go on without him. We have a lot of other important business to take care of before we come to Finch's presentation. Now, let's see. Rat. Yes, JB? That stuff you gave me for my crabgrass just doesn't work at all. <laughs> I can't understand it, JB. It worked beautifully on my lawn. Better come up with something new. Right, JB. We never have any trouble with crabgrass at our place. What do you use? Cement. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, JB, just a little joke. Gentlemen, you will excuse my nephew. It's a combination of youth, high spirits, and extreme stupidity. Uh, now let's see. Let's see here. Hello? Oh yes, we've been waiting for him. Send him in. It's Finch. Gentlemen, I'd like to present my new approach to Wicket's Avenue. It's based on an idea, which in my humble opinion, is brilliant. Sounds promising. Proceed, Finch. What the hell is that? A picture of Mount Vesuvius in eruption. That gives you the kind of impact our new television show is going to have. Now, JP, an example of the kind of national publicity you could look forward to. Oh, God. Now, here's a map of the potential wicked market divided into social, geographic, and ethnic groups. It shows how we'll make deep penetration, overwhelming saturation in those areas where resistance has long been the biggest. I like his thinking. Thank you. Now, here's a sales chart of the past fiscal year, which reflects the disastrous effect of our former advertising policy in terms of per capita consumption of wickets. Notice the sharp decline from normal regularity. Down, down, down. And here's what's going to happen to our sales when we finally get going, as we will. Up, up, up! Ooh. And there you are. Finch, I think you've done it! Very good. <clears throat> JB, could I ask a question? Yes. What is his idea? You heard a television show that will give us deep penetration and deep reaction. Sounds great, Finch. Great, right, men? Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 What? What is the idea? I don't see why you have to be so damned negative. The only things you ever come up with are lousy ideas like treasure hunts. Now, Finch, what is the idea for the show? Well, sir, I don't think I'm going to tell you. And why not? Well, JB, I've always thought of you as a man of breath and vision, open to new ideas. But now I'm not so sure. I'm thrown. By what? The way you just spoke to Bud about his idea for a treasure hunt. You dismissed it. The fact is, there are treasure hunts. And there are treasure hunts. When Bud brought it to me, I thought it was a rotten idea, too. I should hope so. Oh, but then, I remembered something. You see, JB, an idea in itself is nothing. It's the development that counts. Leonardo da Vinci once took sketches for a flying machine, but it took American know-how to develop it into the Boeing 707. I mean, in Gatlin once invented a little machine gun, but it took a mighty brain to develop that into a great program like the Untouchables. When I thought of this, Bud's little idea became a challenge to me. I said, I'm going to take this idea, but from sin. 
defund it. First of all, my prize is not bond, and it's not money. It's stock. Stock! 50,000 shares of stock. Stock? In our company? These days, people like stock better than money. How can we issue 50,000 extra shares of stock? Are you saying Well, that's easy. It's a simple matter of taking the convertible debenture from the sinking fund, issuing them in a stock option, which are exchangeable for rights, which are then converted to non-voting common and replaced with warrants. Huh? Tell me that again? I can't. It can't be done, JB. It can't be done. But if it could, wouldn't it create a tremendous excitement? But it can't be done. But if it could. But it can't. Well, let's just say for one moment, JB, it can all be done. What's your answer? <gasps> I forgot the question. You can't give away stock! Yes, yes. 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 But we give away stock dividends, don't we? Please, gentlemen, let me go on with my presentation. We're ready. Finch, I hate giveaway shows. So do I, Toby. But the public always loves them. I tell you, someone who comes up with an unfixed, unrigged way to give away something for nothing is going to clean up. And gentlemen, I have a new twist. And I present to you the Worldwide Wicked Treasure Girl. <gasps> what is this? This, J.B., is a secret ingredient. The thing that will take this country by storm. I'm combining greed and sex. Cantonese, go ahead. Hello there. I'm the Worldwide Wicked Treasure Girl. Uh, Each week I'm going to bring you a clue as to where the treasure has been stashed. Oh. Um, yeah, buried. This iPad gets me mixed up. <laughs> Isn't this a cute outfit? I love it. Oh, yeah. Very nice, Miss LaRue. Very nice. Well, of course, Miss LaRue is just helping me with my presentation. She won't be our normal treasurer. Naturally. Oh. When we actually go on air, we need a big name personality. Be great for someone like Elizabeth Taylor. Why don't you get Queen Elizabeth? This is an American program. Now, JP, a beautiful treasure girl plus 50,000 shares of stock will. JP, tell this maniac off and let's get on with our business. Yeah, yeah, just, just a moment, just a moment. I'll handle this. Gentlemen and Miss LaRue, if you'll please excuse me, I need a moment alone with Finch. Okay? Take care of him. This is crazy. What about the SECs? What about the FCCs? What about the stockholders? What about the board of directors? What about the federal statutes? What about the federal trade commission? What about the Senate investigating committee? They're all being petty. Finch, uh, you're a brilliant young chap, but I'm afraid you let us down. How, JP? You've missed the boat. You haven't thought this one out properly. I don't understand. Why does this treasure girl have to be a big name personality? Sir? What if she were someone more... More... More identified with the company? A real, uh... A real worldwide wicked girl? Yes, uh... Say, why don't we use Miss LaRue herself? Oh, that's a brilliant idea, JB. Brilliant. Instead of an artificial actress, we'll have plain, simple Eddie LaRue. The girl next door. <laughs> that was a great thought, JB. It wasn't bad, was it? Well, then it's all settled. Uh, just a moment, Finch. Where are you going to hide the treasure? JB, the show is going to be completely unrigged. Not even the treasure girl is going to know where the treasure is hidden. Well, I know. Oh. Okay, but it's to be a secret between you and me. And I'll give you the first clue they're going to announce on the program. West of the sun, west of the moon, where is the treasure? <gasps> Tell me you do. What the hell is that? Tough clue, isn't it? But if you will melt the first letter of each line, WWWB, Worldwide Wicked Buildings. You're going to use our buildings? I'm going to hide 5,000 shares of stock in each of the 10 wide Worldwide Wicked Buildings around the nation. We'll get tremendous publicity. But you'll have mobs of people running around looking for treasure. JB, 
If a man as brilliant and as educated as you couldn't guess from the clue I gave you, do you think the average viewer is going to guess? Good point. Gentlemen, you can come on out. Gentlemen, I'm thinking of going ahead with the worldwide wicked treasure hunt. Of course, I want your approval. Well, JB, I think it's an absolutely crazy motion, and I, I like it! I like it! We like it!
this show? And do you swear that the clue you're about to give is the truth? The whole truth and free from any trickery, chicanery, or dishonesty? Um, is this a real Bible? Why, of course it is. What the hell's wrong with her? She looks surprised. Well, she is. I didn't know about this part of the program. I wanted this part to be completely spontaneous and unrehearsed. That can be very dangerous. I can be very effective. Uh, do you swear to that, Miss LaRue? I do. <laughs> and secondly, do you swear that you yourself do not actually know where the treasure is hidden? Do you swear to that, Miss LaRue? Uh, Miss LaRue? You see, we're going to get into trouble. Why? She doesn't know where the treasure is hidden. And you're the only one to know where it is. She doesn't know. Does she, JB? Let's just watch the program. Miss LaRue, do you swear that you yourself do not actually know where the treasure is hidden? Come, huh. look. I do not wish to take a long rap. I will not swear false witness to perjury. I do know where the treasure is. I found out last night. There's treasure hidden in all the worldwide wicked buildings suggestion for coping with these little problems. However, should you be the cause of a disaster that's really disastrous, you suggest you best review the first chapter of this book, How to Apply for a Job. <laughs> Anybody find Finch yet? He seems to have disappeared. Can't find him. I don't know, but we're looking for him. I haven't seen him. Where's Finch? I don't know. Well, keep looking for him. JB wants to see him and he's hopping mad. Hey, you come back here! What, what are you doing? It's another treasure hunter. This, this little nut tried to sneak past me three times. This little nut is the chairman of the board. That's Mr. Whopper. Chairman of the board? They all look alike to me. I, I'm very sorry this happened, Mr. Wamper. If you'll come with me, Mr. Bigley's in his office. Luckily, they didn't wreck that. Keep looking for Finch. Oh, Rosemary, have you seen Ponty? No, Miss Jones, and I'm so worried about him. So am I. He was a nice boy. Was? What will they do to him? Well, I don't know. Somebody's head has to roll. Ponty will think of something, won't you, Ponty? You have the
chairman of the board is a man. Well, I figured that. What are you going to do? Do? What can a man do when the whole world is collapsing around his ears? Nothing. He's going to get what's coming to him. Haunty, I know what that mind of no. yours. No. I'm going to put that mind of mine away and go back to doing what it was before I came. What were you? I was an exterior decorator. Oh, there I go. I can't even tell you the truth. I was a window washer. Ponty, I don't care what you do. I'm sticking. I walked out on you once. You did. Well, I'm not leaving you again. <laughs> Rosemary, you can't be the, li the wife of a window washer. That's no life for a woman. Sitting at home while, while I'm up there, never knowing if I've ever landed safely. Now listen to me, Finch. Finch? You're wanted in JB's office. Um, I, uh, I thought I would wash up first. He thing. wants you now. Gee, can I even say goodbye to Rosemary? Go ahead. Rosemary? Goodbye. <gasps> Come on! No! Rosemary, I'm sorry! I wish that that doesn't ever happen! No! <laughs> <laughs> Now, this idea of yours... Oh, now, wait a minute, Paul. 
There's one thing I won't do, it's take credit for another man's idea. Especially when he's the boss's nephew. You never told me you hired your nephew. Nephew? Oh, nephew. Well, he's not really my nephew. He's my wife's nephew. I know this may seem like nepotism, Wally, but, but it isn't. I've shown him no favoritism. In fact, I hate him. But you love his ideas. No, when he brought me the idea, I thought it was a lousy one. But then Vince brought it to me, and I, I still thought it was a lousy idea, and I told Vince it was a lousy idea. Then why'd you buy it? Well, it seemed like a good idea. The treasure hunts? Treasure girls? Well, let's dress it all up. He can't deny that the idea for the treasure girl was his. Yes. Absolutely. That was his idea. You know what else? Well, well, that was my idea. And not a bad one. But who the hell picked the bubble-headed tomato? Uh huh. Well, I don't want you getting any wrong ideas. Uh, this is a very nice girl. Uh, you should talk to her. I intend to. Well, I think I've got the whole picture. Now the question is, what to do and who to do it to? Oh no, now wait a minute, Wally. Before you have any hasty decisions, I'd like to say a few words. About what? Humanity. You see, Wally, even though we're all part of the big, cold, corporate setup, deep down under our skin there is a flesh and blood. We're all brothers. Some of us are uncles. Now you may join the Elks, my friend, and I may join the Shriners, and other men may carry cards as members of the Diners. Still others wear a golden key or small Greek letter pin. But I have learned there's one great club that all of us are in. There is a brotherhood, a man, a benevolent brotherhood, a man, a noble tie that binds all human hearts and minds into one brotherhood of
You were the best of friends, Max. Do you remember the fun, the, the, the double dates, Ernest? <laughs> you were never liked. Look, I could uh, make it worth your while. No, I can't. It doesn't pay to be decent. Well, I'm not going to go. No, now you can't make me. No, I'm too young. I'm just a boy. I'll get sick. No, you can't. speaking to you now in my new capacity as Vice President in charge of Employee Morale and Psychological Adjustment. <laughs> uh, Mr. Tackerberry here will now be in charge of personnel. And now, I'd like you to hear a few words from our hard-driving, hard-working President, Mr. J.B. Bigley. <laughs> I can truly state that Worldwide Wickets is now stronger than ever. And I think a lot of the credit should go to a certain bright and very loyal young man. Come out here, Finch. As most of you know, this youngster's rise has been spectacularly rapid. Why, for a while, I began to think he was after my job. <laughs> He didn't want it. <laughs> <laughs> no, JB, your job is much too tough for me. But if any credit should be due, it should go to a great man and great humanitarian. The chairman of the board, Mr. Wally Wong. Incidentally, folks, there's his charming wife with him today. Let's get them both out here, shall we? Mr. and Mrs. Wumper. <laughs> what is it? Oh, no, wait. Mr. Wumper said he didn't feel like making any speeches, but I'm going to make a surprise announcement about it. Uh, Mr. Wumper has decided that after his long years of service, he's going to retire as chairman of the board, and he and his wife are going to go on a long honeymoon trip around the world. What a surprise, sweetie. You didn't tell me. I didn't know. Oh, uh, what the hell. It's not a bad idea. At that... I'll concentrate on you. Now, uh, Wally, uh, who's going to be the new chairman of the board? As if I didn't already know. Oh, but wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't know if I can accept. I still have to consult Mrs. Finch. Rosemary, your husband is calling you. Rosemary, I have a surprise. If you want to make me chairman of the board, what do you think? Darling, I don't care if you're a window washer or chairman of the board or president of the United States. I love you. Aww. Say that again. I love Before you. Before that. Miss Jones, take a wire to the White House. Mr. President, watch out. <laughs> mm -hmm. 